Well, hey there everyone. Today I'm gonna to teach you how to layer iron-on vinyl. Okay, so the supplies we need for this project is going to be a iron-on, AKA heat transfer vinyl of your choice. I am using glitter. Um, you can use an everyday iron-on, you can use holographic, there's lots and lots of different types. I will link a bunch of resources in the blog post that goes with this, but I will be demonstrating with layering glitter iron-on here. I am using a Cricut machine, I am using my Cricut Maker, but you can use the Joy and the Explore just the same. The Joy, the only limitation will be the size of it, so you may only be able to do small designs um, with the Joy, so just bear that in mind, but you can still use it. Um, you'll need a Cricut mat here, and I'm using the green one, the standard green one. You'll also need a weeding tool to be able to weed your vinyl and your design. I'm also using my Easy Press here, so I'm gonna be using the medium Easy Press and I'm using an easy press mat. You can also use an iron, um, but the iron can sometimes be a little bit harder to get the settings right. So if you can, I do recommend sticking with an easy press because it is it was created to actually work with these types of materials. So it has the chance for best results for you. And then of course you're going to need your canvas of choice. And in my case, I'm doing a sweatshirt here for my daughter. Um, you can use t-shirts, tote bags, lots and lots of things to use iron-on vinyl for. So in this particular tutorial, like I said, we are going to be doing a layered design and layering heat transfer vinyl can be very intimidating for some people, but you just need to practice and know the right process. So here I'm going to show you that this here is a single layer design. So this design here, I just did some pretty rainbow holographic vinyl that was iron on, and I just did a single layer here, and it's still really beautiful, and um, definitely something that is a great fun project to make, and a great beginner step to take with iron on vinyl. However, when it comes to layering, you can really elevate your design that much more because we can start to fill in some of these other areas here, like where the pink of this shirt is showing through. You can actually layer that to where it's completely solid. So that's some of the um, benefits of being able to actually layer your iron on. So I wanted to give you an example of what it looks like just to do a single, and then you're gonna see what it looks like when we add um, layers together. So first up, I'm gonna show you in Design Space how to make sure things are set up properly, get your design mirrored, and talk a little bit about the settings that you're gonna to need to work with in order to cut your particular vinyl out. Okay, so here in Design Space, I just want to mention a couple of things if you're new to working with iron-on vinyl. First, I have imported my design of choice. You can import any of your own by using the upload button. And I have a separate video on that that I'll link for you if you're brand new to Cricut and you wanna know how to upload your own SVG cut files. You can also visit um, images over here in projects and Cricut has their own image bank that you can also pull um, images in from as well. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is think about the size of your image. Um, so it's always a good idea to look at whatever canvas you're gonna be putting this onto, whether it be a shirt or a tote bag or whatever it is, and you want to measure how large you would like your design to be on that particular item. Mine is going to be a sweatshirt. So um, for me, uh, eight and a half inches was about right for me when this whole item was grouped together. So it's a really good idea that when you import things, they're gonna typically be grouped um, as one piece. It's a good idea to always scale it as a group so everything stays proportional to each other. And I ended up with about an eight and a half inch design for my particular project. Now, once you've picked your particular design, um, you don't have to worry about ungrouping it to actually get started. It will sort it by color when you click on the Make It button and you go to the Cut screen. So as you can see here, um, we have our white on one and then each of these over here is separated by color. Now, super important, anytime you're working with traditional heat transfer vinyl, also known as iron-on vinyl, you need to make sure you mirror the design because it basically has to be cut upside down so that it is displayed correctly when we actually iron it on. So this little mirror option over here, you just wanna toggle that on so that it is in green and you will see that it is gonna reverse it. And then go down each one of these and just make sure you click that mirror toggle so that everything is mirrored the same way. 
Once you've done that, you can click continue and you'll need to connect to your Cricut machine. I'm connected via Bluetooth, so it's gonna take a second to load. And if you um, are not able to connect for via Bluetooth for whatever reason, you can always plug in that USB cable that comes with your Cricut machine. Okay, once you've done that and you're connected to your maker machine, you will see a option to select your materials. If you've never favorited any materials here, then you'll probably see a popular option that comes up like this. You're gonna wanna make sure you select whichever vinyl you are choosing. So if you're choosing an everyday iron-on, and it will tell you that on the label, or if you're using a glitter iron-on like I am in this project, you'll want to select the corresponding material. If you don't see your particular material, material under popular, you can hit browse all materials. And then you can type in so like for example if you're using holographic then you can type in holographic and you'll see that there is um, iron-on and sparkle iron-on options and different types of um, options for that as well so just make sure you select your corresponding material for me I am selecting glitter iron-on now I want to show you something here for me the glitter iron-on even though I am using the Cricut brand of glitter iron-on my blade typically doesn't ever cut through the glitter iron-on as it should um, with the default pressure. So if I'm using glitter iron-on, I almost always select more pressure so that it will cut through accurately. So that's just a little bonus tip for you. If your iron-on material is not cutting quite all the way through, then just up that pressure to more right there and you'll be good to go. Next, we're going to load our mat. I do like to use the Cricut brand vinyl, um, but you can use Sister brand. There's a Firefly, Firefly brand on Amazon. Um, and I'm gonna link a bunch of those resources in the blog post that's linked below this video on YouTube. So make sure you check those out if you're not sure where to find these um, vinyls or which ones you might want to use. All right, so with any heat transfer vinyl, the most important thing to remember is the shiny side, the side that feels smooth, the pretty side that sort of shimmers and is shiny. You always want that to be down because if it were up, then the Cricut machine would be cutting through the carrier sheet and not actually the vinyl that's going to be going onto the shirt. It wouldn't actually reach the vinyl at all and your design wouldn't be cut properly. It's okay if you've done it before, we've all done it as beginners. Believe me, I've done it many a time when I was first getting started years ago. So now you know, shiny side down, pretty side down always. And you wanna just line that up at your corner and press that down. If you're having any trouble getting your um, vinyl to stick to your mat, your mat is probably not sticky enough if it's been used many times, um, you may need to get a newer standard grip mat. You can always try a strong grip mat too. Um, if your vinyl's been rolled really tightly, it might kind of resist being flattened. So don't be afraid to use the strong grip mat. That really won't hurt anything at all. I do recommend the standard grip though if you can do it and you have a fresh one on hand. We are going to be using the fine point blade for this and I've already set up my settings as I mentioned when we were in design space a second ago, so now I'm going to load my mat. Once that mat is loaded, Cricut Design Space will process and then tell you to go ahead and cut by blinking that Cricut icon button there. Just go ahead and press it. Okay, this design is done cutting. I'm going to unload my mat. And then I'm going to just close this up and get a little extra space on my desk for a moment and flip the mat over and peel the mat away from the material. This just helps eliminate um, curling of your material. It's good to do with any project you're making, especially with paper, but it's also good to do with vinyl. Pull that off. You can use a pair of scissors or you can use a straight cutter and trim the design down and then save the rest of the vinyl, which is what I am going to do. I'm gonna set my extra vinyl aside. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the next bit of my design and I'm gonna grab my mat again here. Always make sure there's never any bubbles in your vinyl, that way it cuts properly. Um, you can use your hand to smooth it out. You could use a Cricut scraper to smooth it out. I also like using this bear tool here and it just kind of presses everything down, smooths it, totally optional, but I do like to use it. There we go, now I'm gonna load my next design. Ah! 
Okay, now it's time to weed our design. As you can see here, I've already started weeding some of my designs. Anytime you're weeding, um, just make sure you have good light. That's really the biggest key to it, so you can see what you're doing, is that you have good lighting. Um, natural light always works best. I'm gonna use my weeding tool at the corner and just begin to pull to get it started. Go very slow when you're doing this. Make sure that you're not lifting off anything that should be staying on the carrier sheet. Once it looks like you have everything weeded, just flip it over and give it a once over with your eye because this is the correct direction. And you might notice you maybe missed something. So just double check that real quick. I'm gonna set this one aside. And then of course we'll continue to weed these other designs. With um, some vinyls like the glitter that I'm using here, it can be hard to see where to weed. So there are things like bright pads that you can get, but I also find that if you sort of roll the design a little bit, you can see those areas that need to be weeded a lot easier, and you can get a better idea of where you need to stick your weeding tool at. All right, now that our designs are weeded and ready to go, we need to go ahead and heat up our easy press. I am using the Easy Press 2. You can also use the Easy Press 1. You could also use an iron, but um, I do recommend the Easy Press if you can do it for best results. Um, if you have an Easy Press like I do, then you're going to want to go to Cricut's Heat Guide. I believe it is Cricut.com backslash Heat Guide. And you will be presented with a screen here that will allow you to select. Um, if you're using the Easy Press 2, or if you're using the Easy Press 1, or the, even the Mini, which I don't recommend the Mini for shirts, but um, that option is there as well. I'm using the Easy Press 2, and we're gonna select the transfer material, which in my case is glitter iron on, and then we're gonna select our base material. To determine your base material, you're gonna wanna look inside the tag at your particular item. So on my tag, it says, this is 60% cotton and 40% polyester. So it is more cotton than polyester, but if we look in the base material options, we see that there is a cotton poly blend selection. So that's what I'm gonna select since it's a blended cotton poly um, piece of material. Up here under the heat transfer material, I'm gonna select that and I'm gonna go down until I find glitter mine is glitter iron on or glitter uh, HTV heat transfer material and then it's going to ask you are you using an easy press mat or are you using a towel so just select that option I'm using the mat and then click apply and it's going to give you your settings so it says I need to set my temperature at 330 for 30 seconds and use light pressure and then I'm also going to want to cool peel it which I will explain what that means in a minute so, so to set this I'm going to power on my easy press and then I need to set it to 3.30. So I'm gonna push the temperature button once. It's gonna start flashing and I need to bring this down by using the minus icon there to 3.30. Then I'm gonna press the um, time one and it's gonna start flashing at 30 seconds. Mine was already set at 30 seconds, so we're good to go there. And now it's going to heat up. So we're just gonna wait until that reaches 330 degrees. Don't start pressing before then because then your material will not probably transfer accurately. So a couple of notes when we're prepping our material here. First, you may wanna consider rolling a lint brush over your material just to make sure that there's no fine pieces of lint on there that could prevent your design from sticking properly. We are also gonna heat our material a little bit first so that the transfer goes on a little bit easier. And I'm also going to be folding this in half and creasing it down the center so that gives me a nice midpoint so that I know I'm placing it um, as squarely in the center as possible. Now, for me, this piece of my design here is the biggest of them all. If we look at the other three layers, we can see that this carrier sheet that's left over here is much bigger than this one. So I always like to start with placing the biggest one first. So before we place anything down, um, our easy press is now heated and ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to crease this down the center by just folding this in half. So fold this directly in half and I'm using like a 
sweatshirt here. So it's gonna be maybe a little bit of a less obvious crease than if you're using a thinner t-shirt material, but we'll still be able to see it. So right in the middle there, I'm just gonna press this for about 10 to 15 seconds. And this is going to give us a little bit of a crease line for us to figure out exactly where the midpoint is. And it's also going to warm our material so that the heat transfer is going to be more accepting to the material right off the bat when we go to put the easy press down on it. So you want to be mindful about how high you're placing this up. I recommend about an inch down from the top, maybe an inch and a half. Of course, this can vary according to your preference. I'm going to place mine there because I want the right word to go above this white star. So that's what I'm going to do. Now to make sure that this is fairly centered here, I'm going to fold this in half just a teensy bit and give it a little crease and I can see the little bend there and I'm going to line that up with the line that's right here on my shirt and that will help me make sure that this is as centered as possible. All right, there we go. So we have that placed. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna place this over the top. Now, my easy press doesn't quite cover this entire area, so I'm gonna start down here and then I'm gonna move up there. Once you set this down, go ahead and press the Cricut icon so it begins counting down so that you know you're holding it for the 30 seconds that it recommends. Okay, so it has told me that the 30 seconds is up, so I'm gonna just lift this straight up down a little bit here. Now I need to press the top. Okay, so I have pressed the top and the bottom here. They're good to go. Now it's warm to the touch. Very important here. You let this completely cool before you lift this carrier sheet up. That is what is known as a cool peel. The cool peel allows the material to completely cool down and the transfer vinyl to completely cool down so that when you lift it up, nothing is still trying to cling to the liner because we don't want that. It would ruin your design and distort it and you probably have to throw away your sweatshirt and start all over. So make sure you let this cool. I say a good solid minute, minute and a half before you try lifting anything up. While this is cooling, I'm just going to make sure that I have the right idea here with my layers that I'm gonna be putting them in the right order. If you're following this exact design, then the solid um, mane of the unicorn here is the very base piece followed by the extra decorative piece here and the chevron piece right there goes on top. So that's gonna give us a little bit of an idea of what this is going to look like once it's actually all layered onto the shirt. And of course, we're gonna be placing it into the center where those words are. So I know I have those in the right order and I'm gonna set those aside for a moment. All right, so my material's pretty cool. I can place my hands on it. Nothing's hurting me when I do that. It's a good test to just touch it with your finger. Obviously do this safely. And then as you lift the carrier sheet, be very mindful that if you see anything that's not sticking down, place it right back down. You need to heat it for another 30 seconds and then let it fully cool. If it looks like everything's sticking just fine, then just proceed slowly to remove the entire carrier sheet. All right, there are our words. Now this carrier sheet, it's our biggest one. Don't get rid of it, set it aside. We're gonna use it in just a minute. I'm gonna show you why. All right, very first thing here, this is the first layer that's gonna go down. So I'm going to get this placed. Now, I'm gonna fold this right down the center there where the two unicorns meet, just to give myself a center point to visualize as I'm placing this. All right, so this is the first layer that needs to go down, and I'm gonna press it. Before I press it, do you notice here how the white lettering that we did is exposed? You can't ever put heat directly on it or it's gonna ruin it. So that carrier sheet that I told you to save, I want you to place it back over it so that it's protected when we go to place down our easy press again here. Placing this down and going to let it heat for 30 seconds. All right, mine is now cool. I'm going to peel this away slowly, making sure everything is remaining in place as I peel the carrier sheet away. Okay, there we go. Set that aside. Now we're going to move on to the next one, which is this decorative piece here. Now, there's no way to sugarcoat this. Lining this up is probably the most challenging part of doing any design. And there's really no exact science of a way to get around this other than to just take your time and make sure everything is exactly where you want it before you proceed to press down. 
I'm again going to grab that largest carrier sheet and place it so that my design is protected. You don't ever want to move your heat press when you're doing this. Um, I used to do that a little bit more in my earlier days and with some designs it's not a big deal. When you're doing layers like this, you don't ever want to move it like an iron because then you're going to shift your design underneath and it's going to not be aligned when you go to lift your easy press up. <clears throat> do that top carrier sheet away first and then again we're going to let this cool. Now, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but here, my design is not sitting down. It's actually still clinging to the sheet, which means I need to reheat that. So I'm going to bring this over here, and I'm going to heat that for 30 seconds. Very carefully, making sure that I'm not touching anything that's exposed here, any vinyl that's exposed without a carrier sheet. This design is just a touch wider than my Easy Press, so it probably just didn't make good contact. So if that happens to you, then just reheat that one portion and let it cool before you peel the entire thing up. All right, so my design is cool for my second layer and now I'm gonna slowly lift this away, paying careful attention that nothing is pulling up. If it is, lay it back down, heat it for 30 seconds, let it cool and then lift again. There we go. So we have two layers together now. And we're going to add the final layer over the top. I think it looks really pretty like that, but I'm going to do half at a time this time because last time it didn't reach all the way to the end, so I'm just going to heat half the design at a time. And that way I don't have to worry about missing anything. Okay, I'm going to lift that spare carrier sheet up there and just get rid of that. Now this is three layers. I generally recommend stopping at three layers just because everything's going to get really thick if you go more than that. Um, but if you do want to do more than three layers, you can perform what is called a slice method in Design Space. Make sure you visit um, the link below to my infusible ink tutorial and I will show you the slice method in that. If you're curious and you do have a design that has more than three layers, then I recommend that you go with the slice method and then that way your design won't be so thick and you'll be able to have your, your beautiful project last a lot longer. All right, so let's take this up now that it's been a couple of minutes. Go slowly, again, very carefully, very slowly, watching everything, making sure it's not lifting. Okay, there we go. There is our layered heat transfer design. This turned out really beautiful. So what I like to do after I have layered all of this on, I like to flip the shirt over and press from behind. So just lay it place down and press from behind and that's what that's going to do is it's going to heat um, from the other side to just really make sure that that design is staying where it needs to. So I'm just going to place my press there and heat from that side. Now as far as care instructions go for this, I highly recommend that you, if you can, wash by hand. It's always the best way to make sure things stay completely in good condition, but if that's not possible, then the two things I recommend is turning your shirt or your sweatshirt inside out to help protect the design and also to put it into a laundry bag so that it's not spinning directly in your washing machine and then of course to wash on gentle. Those three things will drastically improve the lifespan of your design. There we go. There is our final creation, always be yourself unless you can be a unicorn. If you love this file, you can grab it on the blog. I have links to it on the blog. Um, and I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I'd love to know your questions, so feel free to leave a question below and I'd be happy to reply to you and help you. If you need help learning more about how to use your Cricut machine and master your Cricut, I have a whole in-depth workshop and course on that as well. And I would love to see you there. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.